Hello and welcome. Xi Jinping has become the most powerful leader in China in decades after being given a third term as leader of the Communist Party. In staying on, he has brushed aside the convention that the party's general secretary should retire after two five-year terms. Unless he's forcibly removed from power, Mr Xi should now be able to personally choose for how long he will govern. His third term was announced at a ceremony in Beijing, from where our China correspondent Stephen McDonnell reports. Xi Jinping led out China's new leadership team, in order of rank, with him at the top. It confirmed one of the worst-kept secrets in the world, that he'd remain in power into a third term, and potentially for as long as he likes, barring some unknown upheaval in the future. China is embarking on a long journey filled with glory and dreams, and the bugle has been sounded. Again, there were no women on the seven-person Politburo Standing Committee a group stacked with Xi loyalists. Comrade Li Qiang. The appointment of Li Chang as Premier will concern some. He oversaw the disastrous months-long Shanghai lockdown with significant food shortages. Now Mr Li is in charge of managing the Chinese economy. I think the appointment of Li Qiang as the Premier uh, shows that uh, Xi Jinping is not principally interested in the economy. Uh, he's never really been interested in the economy except as a political tool. China's new leadership faces exploding youth unemployment and a massive property crisis. They also have to generate economic activity while implementing strict zero COVID lockdowns. Xi Jinping and his team have pledged to tackle these problems with ideological unity and nationalist zeal. Well, many will wonder if that's going to be enough. Crucially, there are no identifiable successors to Mr Xi in this group. Yet another indication he could remain in power for a long time. Stephen McDonnell, BBC News, Beijing. Well, President Putin of Russia has expressed enthusiastic praise for Xi Jinping. Mr Putin said the development confirmed Mr Xi's high political authority. North Korea's communist leader Kim Jong-un was also quick to send his warmest congratulations. Well, let's get more on this. And joining us live is Dr. Neil Munro, who is a senior lecturer in Chinese politics at the University of Glasgow. Welcome to you. Thanks very much for being with us. Um, so this was widely expected, Xi Jinping securing a third term, um, enabling him to stay in power possibly as long as he likes. Why does he want to? What does he want to do with this authority, with this power? Well, we've got some clues uh, from the uh, political report that was issued at the start of the Congress. Um, so most of the report is concerned with uh, with making the system, the political system and the party system more streamlined, more integrated um, and easier for him to, to use to govern. Um, there's also um, uh, quite a lot in there about uh, green issues. He's still quite committed to that. Um, he uh, still has a, a strong ambition to um, arrange re reunification with Taiwan um, and um, the economy, as, as your reporter mentioned, um, is not really the focus of the report. Speaking earlier, he said that China needs the world and the world needs China. So what does this mean for the country and for its international place in the world? Well, I think we can expect more of uh, what we've seen over the last 10 years. Uh, uh, recall that Xi Jinping's signature initiative in uh, the world economy was the Belt and Road um, Initiative, um, and that involved large-scale investment in uh, developing countries and countries around China. Um, so as the economy starts to uh, run into difficulties, we can expect to see less of that, but, but still the, the outward orientation, the orientation towards China being more important um, as an investor and as a trading partner, we can expect that to continue. Um, the, the difficulties uh, will be with um, uh, the uh, Ukraine crisis causing um, problems with uh, China's uh, integration in Russia being a, a, a big sort of player and energy being such a, a big issue. So um, we can expect from that angle China to be 
pushing more towards uh, pushing more the idea of de-dollarization, um, moving away from the dollar as as the the dominant currency. But there's such a long way to go on that that this is still still very early days. And I want to ask you about the position of women um, in China's politics because there are no women appointed to the top teams, and this isn't that unusual. But what role do women play politically, and what does this say about what say they have? Well, there seems to be a, a definite glass ceiling. We, we don't know exactly where it is. Uh, I mean, women do play a, a role in, in the Communist Party. Um, the Communist Party, at, when it uh, came to power in 1949, saw itself as a liberator of women and, and did a lot to change the uh, traditional uh, place of women in Chinese society, uh, making it more more equal and more um, involving women in the workplace and so on. However, after that initial sort of push, uh, um, probably from the um, late 60s onward, or it hasn't been such a, a big uh, priority. And um, in some ways, you could say that women over the last 20, 30 years have actually gone backward in terms of their um, political position. OK, Dr. Neil, Neil Munro, thanks very much for joining us from the University of Glasgow. Thank you.